So your first question, um, you're going to start off with your name. It could be anything you want it to be. Um, how long you have been teaching here, and what classes, or your job description, what classes you teach, anything okay. like that. So my name is Olivia McGaffey. I teach at Princeton High School, which is where we're at. This is my sixth year here, and sixth year teaching. And I teach uh, social studies primarily, AP US History and AP Human Geo, as well as just kind of the on-level versions of those classes. So that's primarily my role here. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So I have kind of a controversial person. Oh. which would be John Adams. Oh. He was the second president of the United States and not a very good president, I will say that. <laughs> Made some controversial decisions with uh, shutting down free press, which is not a good call. But I think what I really admire about him and hope to emulate to some extent is just his ability to stay true to himself and his principles and be honest, mm -hmm. even when it's not popular, to be that way. So I think that's something that I find really inspiring. It can be, it can get people into hot water at times. So obviously I need to make sure that I don't get myself into a situation where I'm <laughs> going to get in trouble for something. But I think that staying true to your principles can be really difficult sometimes. Absolutely. And he managed it. He's one of the first presidents that was really openly against slavery. And mm -hmm. so I think that's pretty cool. Wow. Absolutely. So I have it sitting here and I will display some of these gems. So for a long period, over several weeks, I think maybe even months, Jake would bring me a cutout from a magazine and then a little note to go with it with really no explanation for why or I don't know. I just. Like, why me? <laughs> was this happening with other people? I didn't know. And I just gratefully accepted whatever gems came my way. So, things. I'm just trying to find one that I think is fun. They're just things like this one. You, We taped it on there. It says, from the desk of Jake Gruba, there, wait, no. Here is a man. I'm not sure who he is, but he exists, so that's fun day six and then it just says you're welcome and it's signed <laughs> Jake Gruba and there's a lot like that I know for a couple of days in a row there was a series with women on chairs or stools oh yeah um and so just a lot of that sort of thing and I think that that is really funny and this is for you you are welcome Sally Field yep I mean she's an American Hero. Absolutely. Or this kid wearing sunglasses going like this. That is perfectly <laughs> cut out. I've been saving these to give you back them, I thought, oh when my you gosh. graduate. Because I thought, how fun will this be for you to look through all of these again? <laughs> this kid is awesome on his own. I found him in one of Mrs. Sorensen's old magazines. I hope you enjoy, and I will see you in second hour. Note, I will be in New York all of next week. See you after. I don't even know what that word is. Something just in this just I, in I case. I retraced this just in case. Sure. What does that mean? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What do a lot of these mean? I don't know. <laughs> and that's just kind of, um, I think the beauty of them is just, I don't know what's going on. So I, I plan to rematch these up. And give like this one has a whole little flip book that goes oh, with it. Oh wow! With a picture of a lady in a bathtub, which is a little bit like oh that one's a little. Uh, I can't believe that's even an ad. I mean that's really oh, wow. quite. She's really just <laughs> in there. Wow. So yeah, that's... I think that's probably. I mean just the variety oh, too. Close up baby. Oh yeah. A little puppet. There's just some, someone's, oh gosh, this one's really weird. Okay, someone's knees, <laughs> knee, they're kind of squatting, a lady putting on lip gloss, uh -huh. it, it's just Dora. Oh, Dora. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday, With it's a Dora. picture of Dora. 
Oh man. I just appreciated it and it, I always kind of, once I realized this was going on for a while, I started to really look forward to what I was gonna see because <laughs> it was just so <laughs> random. And it just was kind of a day bright and I think that's something you're really good at, Jake, is just being a uh, day brightener for a lot of people. Nice. I was not expecting you to save all of those. Wow. I saved wow. them. Don't you worry. <laughs> wow. I have them all, and I think there might even be more in the drawer. Oh I just gosh. have to dig out the rest. But yeah, I that's, think this is probably my favorite memory. That's awesome. I love that. Um, funny story. Um, first of all, this started because of Ira. Really? Because he was coming in here and telling you like some form of joke. Every really day. bad. Oh, A really so bad, bad joke. So I was like. I should do that with just like random things. So I started like cutting out <laughs> random pieces of a magazine and I was like, perfect. Now I'm going to give it to McGathy with a little note. I enjoyed it. Yeah. And I was actually going to do it last year too. I was going to continue it last I year. I am really sad that you didn't. I guess then, we yeah. all know what happened last year. We all know what happened last year. But also, I mean, oh, another, another gem. Uh, I got this from Jake for Christmas, I think it was yes. last year. And you even wrote that on the back, but we got the That's name of the plant on here. And I put, so, I don't know if you remember, he I gave do. this to me, Octavia, gave me this little worm on a string. So it just lives on this little plant and they live in happy little harmony together. And I also just, I think of you whenever I see it and I always smile. Oh, so. It's it will nice stay here. Like that. You love to see. I think the main thing that I would tell an incoming freshman coming into high school is that it's really the time for you to start learning how to work towards adulthood and start advocating for yourself. I hear a lot of students that are freshmen that get nervous about things and they don't want to email me or contact me if they're struggling, but you're gonna have a lot more success if you do contact me. If you wait until the point where your grade is at <laughs> an abysmal point, it's it's gonna be a, a really steep uphill climb. So it's better to be in contact, you know, earlier. And again, you be in contact with me. Not I'm open to parent emails always, but I want to hear from the student too because that's the person I need to be helping. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to reach out via email and let me know what you need. Absolutely. Ooh. It's, it's been a rough year. Um, I'd say a highlight is just getting to be back in person is really a delight. Uh, and I, I feel really glad that I was able to get my vaccine before I came back. It made me really comfortable and just excited because I do I miss students the whole time it's it's not the same being on zoom zoom can be a really good tool that I hope to use in future years for other things but it's just it is nice being in person and uh, I'd say that's probably the highlight is just being able to come back I hope that we are able to keep everyone healthy and safe and keep school open because that's really that's the best part if you talk to any teacher, the part of their job that they like the most isn't just about the content. Yes, I like history, but it's really about the people. That's what I love about my job. And so when I am not with people, it, it really is not as fun and as meaningful. No, I absolutely agree with that. It was terrible. It was rough. That online period. Yeah, and it's, it's hard for kids, it's hard for teachers, it's hard for everyone involved, and obviously we need to keep safety in mind, which is why that decision was made and I support it, but it was just, I'm glad that we are, with our case there at a point where we can be back in person and get things moving again. Absolutely. Definitely don't have to I would disagree. That. Oh. I think the French horn is God's instrument. Way more majestic. I think she said tenor sax. The French horn is the most superior instrument to any, and I will die on that hill. <laughs> it is, it is so cool. The shape of it is cool. It is, yeah. The sounds it can produce, it's the coolest. Tubas have their place. I support them. I was in band for a long time. Mm -hmm. I did marching band and 
concert band and stuff in high school, and I played uh, the bass clarinet, so I'm not... I did oh. play the French horn for a while, and then when I was in elementary school, or I guess fifth grade is that elementary school anymore, I don't know. It's I thought, bad. this is too heavy to carry home. I'm gonna pick up the bass clarinet. <laughs> Learn that. <laughs> not any lighter, so that was a bad move. Oh, I still oh, think yeah. French horn is objectively classier. Hmm. You ever met a French horn player that's not a classy, cool person? No. I haven't, so I think clearly the tuba players, they're always the class comedians, and I appreciate that too. True. But if we're talking about God's instrument, it should <laughs> be majestic. It should be. Absolutely. Take that, Baxter. Yeah. He's going right. to come for me now. <laughs> He's going to come up here right now. Yeah, he probably heard me. <laughs> he has something installed. From in the all corner. the way in the pack, he just has a microphone yeah. in here. <laughs> Oh, I think a highlight of my first year here was just how supported I felt by the staff. I feel like we have a really amazing teaching staff here and I was nervous coming in. I didn't really know what to expect because I haven't worked anywhere else and I wasn't really sure what the reception was going to be, um, but everyone has been so great and supportive and I really appreciated that and I think that really made my first year going so much smoother that all of the people in my department were willing to support me and help me in anything that I needed help in. And I think that is such a key to success. If teachers can help support other teachers to continue to get better and stuff, it makes a huge difference. And it was fun getting to see what actually interacting with kids and being in charge was like, <laughs> because you just, you don't really know what you're getting yourself into fully. Mm -hmm. You student teach, but it's not the same because there's always someone in the back of the room and yep. you're never fully the full teacher. So I think you can't be totally ready for your first year, but just having that support group really made it worth it and, and really enjoyable. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's good, good advice for a lot of people. Yeah. Like any, real, really any job. Yeah. You gotta have good so support. You gotta, good support and also when you're in a position where you have new people coming in, make sure you mm -hmm. go out of your way to make them feel comfortable and supported. It will make them a better employee. So even if you're thinking about it from kind of a selfish standpoint, you're gonna have better <laughs> results from them if you make them feel valued and, yeah. and help them with what they need help with. so many <laughs> uh i just remember so my first year teaching here i looked a lot younger teaching ages you that's something they don't tell you but now <laughs> now kids i'm 28 and now kids think oh she's 35 and no i'm not uh no. but i remember a lot of the students that were in my class i had to teach senior government so i have 18 year old kids in a room i'm 22 i'm young and they thought that i was a new student not oh, the teacher no. when I walked in and then I heard this go oh and they made a, a swear she's the teacher because <laughs> I had been standing outside the door greeting kids as they walked in and they thought that I was just some weird new kid yeah. that was dressed up and standing outside the door I was not oh my uh, gosh. teaching teaching seniors when you're a 22 year old was a, a real ride I you know I don't think I was, again, totally ready. You aren't totally ready for anything, and it no. was really fun, but it was also just such a unique experience, trying things and seeing how they went and oh, trying man. to readjust, and it was, I've had a lot of just really fun. To, I really like working here. I like Princeton High School. I like this, the kids, the school. We have good kids here. Really good kids. Absolutely. Let's go. Um, your final question here today. Uh, so you have now gone through this process, the interview process with mm -hmm. me. What is your advice for other teachers that are going, going to go through this? Oh, I didn't get to see any advice from people that interviewed before me. Oh. Do they deserve any advice? I don't know. Um, <laughs> Would you like to hear some of what they've said? Well, no, I think I don't want to be biased by it, so I'm actually okay with this, but okay. I don't know. I don't think I'm a very insightful person. I think just try to be honest and be yourself would be the most, probably very similar to what other people have said, but. Well, uh, I think Muckenhorn said, um, look at the questions before, 
and like prepare your answers. And I forget what Moses said, which is odd because this was like last Friday. Well, a lot has Friday. happened between now and Friday. That's true. Very true. I presume anyway. I mean, just a whole weekend. Yeah. Well, well, thank you for this. This was, it was my great, pleasure. Great opportunity for me to get to talk to you. Um, yeah, that's. It's weird not having you in class this year. I gotta say. It that. is. Yeah. <laughs> One it's of my just favorite teachers. It's one of the joking. you know you're gonna graduate and mm -hmm. then it's there's gonna be a large gap. There is. Everyone knows you. No, the kids, no one can replace. The kids know no, no absolutely not. The no. kids know you and they're gonna miss you. Obviously the teachers too, but that's a good. Oh, of course, yeah.